Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our daily show here out of Backdoor from Bronson um, on the West Coast. But we're we're calling everywhere these days. You know that we've been calling um, to friends down in Bolivia. We've called our friends in Guatemala as well. And now um, we're talking to one of our friends, uh, Janice Nadwarni, who works for Food for Farmers. She's the co-director there. We're going to be having a conversation with um, her and Bob today. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce her now and, and, and Bob as well and have everybody say hello. Uh, so what time is it where you are right now, Janice? Uh, it's 12 in the Vermont. Okay, in Vermont. What a lovely place. Now I heard, and this is just a side conversation, that there might be a coffee to maple syrup exchange going on. Is that true? Okay. All right. So, um, and uh, it, can anybody be part of that, or is that just a very closed, uh, closed circle? There was. Uh, I, I, I believe this resulted from a logo mug request. I asked Janice to use logo mug during this uh, interview, and she she told me she'd draw one on her cup. But so we're gonna make sure Janice gets some fresh backdoor coffee and a logo mug. And there's a rumor that perhaps some fresh maple syrup will come back our way in return. Oh, okay. All right. This is sounding good. All right. maple syrup is great with bean maple syrup. Good. Well, um, so uh, I think what we wanted to talk about today was a little bit of the, about the relationship that, um, that Batdorf has with Food for Farmers. But also I want to let um, Bob guide a little bit of the conversation with Janice um, really focusing on what Food for Farmers does and, and why it is that, you know, we like being uh, engaged with them and working with them. Yeah, so thanks, Josh. Um, you know, as I've been kind of stressing with many of these Wednesday, uh, you know, broadcasts that we've been doing, I like to just emphasize the relationships we've built with uh, other people in the coffee industry over the years. Um, obviously, the producer focus is always a focus of mine. Um, and however, it's 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 not just producing partners. It's also uh, other organizational partners that perhaps work at Origin, um, perhaps work here in the states. But Food for Farmers is one of those organizations that. Um, I've been kind of really sort of trying to foster with Backdoor, and I thought that this would be a great opportunity to introduce this to some of our customers if they had not heard about Food for Farmers already. Um, historically, um, like Janice reminded us, it's been about two years, a little over two years that we've been working with Food for Farmers, and we started with a... Um, basically a, a tandem food or a coffee promo. It was coffee that we purchased from a co-op in Mexico, uh, the Sesmoc co-op. Uh, our customers might know this coffee is El Triunfo. Um, it's a certified organic fair trade coffee in Mexico that we purchased that does have direct relationship with Food for Farmers. And um, we basically sold that coffee and just added a buck uh, that would be a direct donation to Food for Farmers as a result of sales of that coffee. Um, my goal, however, was to get some sort of ongoing contributions without there being um, a kind of a coffee-specific uh, um, partner here. Um, so I guess with that, now it's probably a good segue to let Janice talk about what that relationship with a specific uh, producing group or what Food for Farmers actually does. So um, have at it, Janice, uh, enlighten us. Well, we partner with coffee cooperatives. So La Feliz, Flores, we work with them to help diversify their farm. So along with coffee, they can grow 
foods. They can transition to organic practices. They can keep bees. They can start small businesses that are right in the community um, and, and sell their food to their neighbors and communities so that everyone in their rural areas can access healthy food. But the other reality is because people are not talking about taking the farmers who are tremendous resources for coffee and are now making them important resources for their community in terms of growing food for everyone. And also farming using climate smart practices to reduce chemicals, to increase better water nutrition, um, and to make their farms environmentally friendly and a really, really effective climate change. And I know you know this, Bob, they're on the front lines for sure. conversations I've had with you, Janice, and I, it's always been something that I've talked about, um, and, and I know we don't necessarily, I mean, we agree, but we don't agree, you know, it's like trying to get coffee producers to not grow coffee, right? So we're, we're having producers grow coffee, but at the same time, that diversification is, is very important. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm always talking to our employees and customers, and as a small premium coffee roaster, we, we pay premium prices for our coffees. Um, but, you know, we're, we're such a small kind of slice of the pie. And what I always try and explain to people is it's not what you can sell your top 10% or your top super premium coffees for. It's, it's what do you do with the rest of your crop that might be um, not, you know, if you're talking SEA scores, you know, low 80s, um, something that's really not going to really command those super high prices. And when the coffee market's doing what it's doing, that's when producers really suffer. Um, so it's kind of a great way to get producers to, to kind of get away from coffee, which I think is important. Um, not necessarily totally away from coffee, but to find other means of, of income and diversification. So um, maybe specifically, can you talk about what some of those diversified means are? I, I know you mentioned microcredit. I know you mentioned just kind of growing food sort of generically. Um, there's also uh, like honey projects that you guys have done. So maybe just hit on a couple of those. Sure. And, you know, we're not talking about taking away from coffee. We're talking about adding to coffee. So I would say the vast majority of the farmers we work with continue to grow as much coffee, and they can take income from their other on-farm businesses to invest in those farms and improve the quality of those farms. So we're not taking away from coffee. We're just saying this farm is a is a hub. It's a resource hub. There are lots of things that the family can do there in addition to coffee. Um, and I just want to say one more thing, that there's a danger in monoculture. Even if they put all of their land into coffee, look what happens when there's monocropping, right? Coffee rust. Look what happens in their one species of honeybee here, <laughs> colony collapse disorder. Look what's happening with this mm -hmm. pandemic, right? When you plant one thing on a farm, you make that farm vulnerable to disease and pandemics of some sort or climate change. 
So what we're doing is by diversifying that farm and adding to coffee, growing below and above that coffee, so to speak, we're protecting and diversifying the farm, the land, the family, and the coffee itself. So um, we start out looking at the family and what the family needs. So they're indigenous, seed saving, producing organic foods, but also producing um, value added products. So jams and juices and other things that they can that they can sell. So they grow food, they start growing food for their families, but they're producing so well that their community needs food, they start up farmers markets. Or with one of our co-op partners in Colombia, they're doing food exchanges where they don't always sell, but everybody will bring a different crop or recipe or different kinds of foods and they'll exchange and barter with their neighbors including seeds. So taking that food and growing it into a farmer's market is what I'd say most everyone that we're working with on our home garden program is doing. They're also keeping chickens, eggs, small farm animals that, that they're selling those products as well locally to individuals and businesses. Um, in addition to that, we have beekeepers. So um, producing honey, but also producing um, royal jelly and pollen and propolis and all of those bee products that in a lot of remote communities, people don't have access to, to doctors, so they use it for, for medicinal purposes and nutrition purposes. Pollen has a lot of protein in it, and so um, families will give their kids pollen, and um, it's very good and makes them grow big and strong, and it's you know, used as a, as a medicinal and nutritional product for a community. So help them um, develop these businesses, and, and many people will just sell locally. They'll keep some beehives, they'll sell some honey locally, they'll keep it for their families. Others will start to group their products and export um, internationally. So two of our partners, Sesmach in Mexico, which you've supported, and My Ishio, and also Akadiwe in Guatemala, they're all producing honey for export. So coming from their same farms, that same terroir, Honey has a wonderful flavor profile, very varied depending on what's flowering. So that's a really lucrative product in this market as well. And then the third part of our, our work is uh, along with, you know, using co-ops to reach out to farmers to help them develop businesses and healthier food. The co-ops are now leading the way to healthier communities um, through school garden programs. So we have several school gardens in Nicaragua and one in Colombia where they're serving hundreds of students and they're growing food there, their parents are working with them, their teachers are adding it to the curriculum, kids are bringing food home to their families, they have healthy snacks, healthy lunches. So the co-ops are really working with us and local partners to help bring you know, that healthy school nutrition as well to the larger community. So it's a combination of having healthy food accessible to all, lots of small businesses, and also helping add to coffee on small farms so that people can stay on their farms, earn a living, and not have to migrate off. So, and I want yeah. to jump in really quick for a second, if I could, Janice. I was showing a few photos um, that you provided for us, and uh, one of them was um, labeled as a beekeeping trainer, and um, it looked like he was he had uh, some honeycomb that he was um, that he was uh, doing quality assurance tests on. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, maybe how that worked with the be the trainers and how they interact with members of a cooperative, for example, like the one that we work with? Sure. Um, so, you know, the challenge is that a lot of NGOs will work with a cooperative, with an organization. Others will work with families at that household level. And we work at both levels. So we help the co-op develop the capacity to manage a food security program because their business is really selling coffee. This is completely new. So there has to be somebody at the cooperative whose job it is to really manage these programs and make sure things are going well, if there are problems, they're addressed, and um, to sustain that work locally. And what we do is we help develop the tools to monitor the programs, the curriculum for training, and the expertise at the co-op level so that this specialist, like Domingo at my Shield, can reach families and support them as they learn about beekeeping. We've also added another layer 
between the community, uh, the coordinator, like Domingo, and the families keeping bees, we have community promoters. Now. And these are usually young people, children of coffee producers, they're teens to late 20s, typically a lot of them are young women. And what they do is they learn to um, support families, they visit families, they help them address problems, they bring that information back to the coordinator at the co-op. So there's this whole hub of um, resource going out to families from the cooperative. And Domingo's expertise is beekeeping. He's a beekeeper. Um, and we've uh, helped him access more training and expertise. We have a, we work with an ecological college called Ecosur in Chiapas, Mexico. And they've been doing the training with my Shield and with Sesmatch for beekeeping because they have expertise there. But it's this whole support system so that cooperatives can really embed that knowledge locally so that say there's a pandemic and we lose all of our funding and food for farmers can't support the community anymore the cooperative and the families will have enough knowledge and experience so that they can continue on their own because that's the gap you know in in development work in these kinds of programs they're trained people are trained they're there's a grant, they are given the money, but then after a period of time, the money goes away. The NGO goes away. And what happens and what stays in the community? We believe that that knowledge and those skills and the tools, being able to use the tools to monitor their own progress, those are the resources that will never leave no matter what, right? So we make sure that they can do it on their own. And Domingo is a really important person. He's an important part of this. But if he left or something happened to Domingo, there would be promoters, there would be families, there would be expertise elsewhere so that the work doesn't depend on one person. That's the other danger, you know, in development work, that there's one person or a company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's really important, Jan, is to just emphasize, you know, this, the goal of this is seed money to get these programs started with the goal being that they're self-sustaining programs. And you know, some some are gonna stick and some might not, and that's okay too. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, okay, so one other thing, you know, food security. I wanna talk a little bit about food security, right? You, you mentioned what happens if, uh, you know, a global pandemic hits and things dry up. And um, that's obviously could be uh, what's, what's occurring right now, what we're experiencing, um, but, but, but one of the things that I want to emphasize is that's kind of that food security issue is an issue in these communities all the time, not just when there's a global pandemic occurring. And, and, and this is kind of the basis for the organization. And obviously things have changed. It's a little different right now. Um, and, and this was one of the reasons why I thought it would be a great thing to discuss today. Um, because, you know, a, as I said in that email I sent to you last week, it was, you know, we're worried about whether or not there's going to be toilet paper on the shelf. And somebody came through and, you know, cleaned out all the box mac and cheese and ramen and we get all bent out of shape. Um, how would you feel if you went to the store and A, you didn't have money to pay for anything? And B, there wasn't anything to purchase, even if you did have money, right? So these yeah. these are real issues for people in many of these um, areas, uh, coffee producing areas specifically in the world. So um, I just want to want to be clear with anyone that's listening and watching right now that this 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 whole organization and our support for it has stemmed from this idea of of food security at origin. And making sure that because of the, the the nature of the crop cycle with coffee, there's a big influx of, of income during the harvest, and then there's nothing. So, um, do you have anything that you want to kind of add, or well, yeah, I know that yeah. wasn't. No, it's 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 everything because you know people talk about having to pivot in this environment with the pandemic. I don't think we've pivoted at all. I mean, we <laughs> were just focused on this issue. And now this issue is front and center because everybody's experiencing it. You know, imagine you're in a community and there is no store to go to for food. There's nothing, right? Mm -hmm. The roads are closed. The trucks aren't coming. And so what we've seen is um, we just 
produce our annual report for 2019, and that's when we every year we take a look at what changed, what improved, you know, what was the impact of, of the work. And like at Cinematch, I think we found that beekeepers improved their income, their net income by something like 40% with their honey sales, and honey prices were pretty bad. Um, more important, with the home garden programs, the community, we have four communities now working with home gardens and farmers markets. Most people now have food. They're growing food. They're getting through this because they can't leave. There are no roads. Nobody can get in and out now. They're locked down. Guatemala, Colombia. Nicaragua's pretty open. We have a, an organic farmer's market with Sopexca that 33 women are running. And they have not only increased their income, but they're continuing to grow food. They're providing it for their neighbors. They can't travel. They live in little enclaves of you know, groups of houses. They're selling or sharing with their neighbors. So the people in our program have food. And our goal this year is to make sure we have enough money to make sure they have seeds, they have seedlings, they have everything they need to keep growing food throughout this cycle so that they can continue to provide for their communities. And so yeah. the value of their farms now is just tremendous because if you can grow food and, and get it locally, um, you can get through it, right? Yeah, and um, like I was saying, it's, you know, we're at a time right now where, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen the lines at the, uh, the garden supply stores. Um, I've, I've tried buying some seeds for this year and a lot of stuff's, you know, it's slim pickings out there, but I, I think this is great, right? What, what this is doing is, you know, every, anyone that knows me knows I'm a glass is half full kind of guy. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, pe people are, people are doing this locally, uh, here in Olympia, I'm sure in Vermont as well. Um, and, you know, fortunately we have the opportunity to, to, to grow our own gardens, have a little bit of space to do that. But I hope it's something that, you know, all of our customers and anyone in our communities will, will kind of keep in mind as they're, you know, sticking their hands in the, the dirt and turning some soil and planting some seeds. And, you know, the, the, the idea of being kind of get more connected with your local communities. And um, it speaks to the work you guys are doing at local communities ground level in coffee producing areas and i know people are feeling some energy right now here in regards to that yeah. um and and I, I i would love to see that continue so um you know i mentioned that when we first got involved with you guys it was specifically with the sesmoc co-op in mexico uh we sold that coffee and I've been looking for ways to kind of have ongoing support for the organization. Um, you know, but I just would like to let our customers know. Um, so the way that we've decided to do that as a company is we're gonna have ongoing um, employee contributions that are facilitated through um, basically our payroll. So regardless of whether or not we're selling a specific coffee um, that comes from one of the communities that you guys are working with. Employees have the opportunity to contribute on their own. Um, and th that's happening right now. That's started here at Baddorf. So I, I can give you some, some specific numbers and details uh, a little later. But one of the reasons, you know, another reason, I guess I should say, why I wanted to have you on, hopefully we have uh, a lot of our employees tuning in Maybe not live, but they can um, come and and watch this and just kind of get get a better understanding of what it is you guys do and and how you do it. Um, so that's that's an ongoing thing. Um, my my next goal, perhaps then, is to, you know, the great thing about the coffee sales is it gives our customers an opportunity to to participate and contribute to this. So um, in the event that we don't have a specific copy, which we don't right now. Um, perhaps I can uh, have a little convo with the, the powers that be about ways that we could facilitate some customer contributions as well. I know Josh. Usually uh, I'm the one who, uh, who uh, commits you to doing things live in public. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're taking the lead on this one. <laughs> which is recorded and it's, it's gonna be recycled in perpetuity, right? Over and over. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, I, I know 
I know how this works. You know, I've, I've, I've done some work with some, you know, nonprofit volunteer organizations. Um, and, you know, it's, it's that ongoing support that really does kind of sustain things, um, knowing that you got at least something coming in on a regular basis. So I, I think that's true, uh, Bob. What you've just said there is the key. I mean, it's great to be from, a, from our perspective as a business. We have the ability to um, obviously highlight a copy and, uh, so, and help our customers understand how that can support farmers. Um, but just like you has already been discussed, we have these cycles of, of you know, um, uh, uh, liquidity comes into a community, then leaves a community because it's agricultural, <laughs> right? What we're yeah. really working to do is find ways to make um, – food and community sustain more sustainable. Anybody who, you know, knows any of the thing of the history of Global North, Global South knows that so many of those communities, as they move towards export um, crops, were, have, were, were kind of disconnected from those traditional ways of multiple crops and food sustainability. So it's great that we get to partner with Food for Farmers in relearning, just like you said, a lot of us here, in the global north are, are relearning these very same things too, right? That, oh, we have, we have to take care of ourselves. And I think it's awesome that um, as an employee, I get to be part of the sustaining um, aspect of that. And then we can also even invite our customers to come in and do that too. I wanted to let everyone know that we have provided a link into our comments here. Um, oh, can't hear Joshua. <laughs> Well, everything I've just said, you've heard, but nobody out here has it. Looks <laughs> I, like. I, I heard you, Josh. <laughs> I heard you. You said it great. Well, um, so unfortunate for our, our viewers, maybe. Um, but mm -hmm. there is a link, and uh, you guys can probably um, reference that as well. So, where, where is the link? It's on. Is it, it on the event? In the comments. In the comments. Okay. Well, and I just want to say, you know, having a garden is wonderful. Um, but in Vermont, you know, it snowed two days ago, so we're pretty limited. Um, but in the communities where we work, people are planting, you know, three rounds of vegetables a year. So they can, they can have their gardens all year long, which is fantastic for them, you know, and the food supply. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's, it's good. It's good stuff, Janice. It's good stuff. So this is why I wanted to make sure that we shared this with, with employees and customers alike. Um, like Josh said, um, if people can hear me, but they couldn't hear Josh, he's going to provide just a link with more information about food for farmers. Um, and if anyone, as always, has any questions about what we're doing at Bethlehem from Bronson, um, in partnership with Food for Farmers, I, I would love to hear from you, um, and we can we can find the resources that we need to get those questions answered. And, and and I don't know what you know customer from from our standpoint uh, customer contribution looks like, um, but you know I got some ideas. We we'll figure it out. But in the meantime, um, rest assured that. The company and our employees uh, believe in what you guys are doing, and we're going to do what we can to help uh, support you and and see us all through that vision. So, well, and, and I'm also available to get in touch through Facebook message or you know contact us if you have any questions about our work. Anybody, uh, feel free to get in touch. Happy to talk because we're here at home, available twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully, hopefully uh, I, I fixed a little bit of a mic issue, issue here. People can maybe uh, hear me a little bit better now. Um, so uh, you'll see up um, on the screen right now, I have uh, have the Food for Farmers website in here. Specifically, if you go to the blog, you can read a little bit more about what they're, um, what they're sharing with us regarding uh, COVID-19 impact on coffee farming families. Um, it's a little bit of kind of the things that we've been talking about. Um, and also, I want to make sure everyone knows if you go to the to um, a link to visit Food for Farmers, there obviously um, is a way that you can contribute, right? Um, and I, I, just have, I have to say that. I have to make the pitch, right? Um, because, again, getting back to that idea of, you know, 
Um, we can highlight copies, and Bob's going to work on that so that we can connect you with farmers that way. But there are also uh, ongoing and sustained needs that um, Food for Farmers is working directly with people to be agents of change in their own lives, and we can help them out that way by having sustained contributions. And again, I know people say this all the time, and I would say this to our staff or to anybody who's watching, right? Any amount really does help. I mean, it's our collective amount. If it's a dollar uh, a month, if it's a dollar a paycheck, those, those don't seem like large amounts to us maybe, but they really can compound and they can really do a lot in, um, in, the, in the communities that Food for Farmers works in. All right, well, thank you, Janice, for taking the time to come join us today. Um, I appreciate it, yeah, uh, as does, uh, you know, all of us here at Baddorf, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, I was gonna ask, I know it's been a, a, there's been a little bit of a cold spell there in New England recently. <laughs> Um, we're uh, kind of in, in prime spring spring gardening season here. Um, I've been seeing a lot of mushrooms pop up. Morels are starting. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. I know uh, Janice, uh, for all our, our audience today, Janice is a uh, diehard uh, forager. And if you ever want to talk, um, you know, <laughs> search and search and eat. Uh, with m mushrooms or or other items, uh, you guys can y y I, you'll you'll make sure that they are enlightened, Janice. I have plenty of blackberries up here in my yard, Janice. Would you like to come help me forage those out of the way? <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah, come, come come spend September in the Northwest. Well, there. Oh, I've been there. There are pheasant backs here, Bob. Just found a bunch of those and. Yep. Well, you know, if we can ever leave again and travel, um, there mushroom foraging. Um, you know, it's big. It says much. There's a couple of people that are that are cultivating mushrooms, and they also yeah. I was it, so. I was going to ask you about that. Whether or not there's been any. I, I know there has been mushroom programs in the past in some coffee communities. Um, if that was something that food for farmers had explored at all, and those can be dried for export, right? What. Those can be dried for export. Yeah. Absolutely, but you know, I, I learned that um, if you sun dry mushrooms, they create they they have a lot of protein. There's a lot of vitamin D, um, so they use sun dried mushrooms for people people who like to eat mushrooms in Latin America. They're they're sun drying them, screen drying them, for um, for that vitamin D. So um, I know they're cultivating. I know they're chanterelles. I know they're they're several edibles. So. Um, Personally, I would love to see us do that, but I can't commit because Marcel is in charge of our program, so can't can't force her. But Bob, I'll, maybe you can use your influence. I'll I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> it would be great to do that together. Let's go when we can go back. Go to Sesame. Yeah. We'll go foraging. We'll go foraging with Leticia and um, Lucas. And I'll let you know that Andy Trindle on Facebook just commented. He says that blackberry picking every summer in Gig Harbor is one of his favorite childhood activities. So we'll 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 get him involved with uh, okay. with the black Andy, she, things. That, Andy that's G. That's a that's a woman, Andy. Oh, Andy G. Got it. A and D I. Andy's, got it. Sorry Andy's, about that, Andy. I knew who you are. Andy's community service. That's her blackberry picking in the. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks all right. so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Anytime, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, Janice, and uh, we'll be in touch shortly. Okay. All right, maple syrup's on the way. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks, Josh. You bet, buddy. Take care. Um, so, folks, thank you um, again for tuning in today. That was a great conversation um, about uh, not just food security, but also uh, how we all get to play a part, whether we're in the global north or the global south, in creating sustainable futures, right? So please uh, hop onto the link that we provided um, and go look at Food for Farmers and their work. As Bob said, you know, we've, we've been able to highlight copies from the communities they work with directly before. We'll be looking at that in the future and we'll make sure everybody knows about that. Um, we hope you're enjoying these Wednesday mornings. You know, we've been, uh, Bob's been working really hard to bring in folks um, to, uh, to give us different topics to look at and think about. This is just one of them. Um, so thank you. 
this is always, I mean, these things are always interconnected, right? I mean, we are a business, we source and sell coffee, you are our customers, and um, when you buy that coffee, a, a portion of what you're buying are these relationships that we invest our time and our hearts in. Obviously, you know, as individuals in um, the company, we also donate to Food for Farmers, and we find ways to help customers do that as well, but also um, the purchases you make just by nature of, 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 of buying the coffee that Bob is sourcing, um, that connects you in that way to those, to those farmers as well because we do uh, spend time and treasure on this because it's important, you know, it's, we, there is no coffee in our cafes without farmers living lives of dignity and sustainability in origin. And we all have to find better ways to, um, to, to grow that relation, to grow those relationships. And a key part of that is connecting you, the folks who drink our coffee and who are our customers, growing our relationships directly down to the, to the farms through this and other means. So thank you for every purchase that you make. Every time you visit us, um, you're not just supporting Backdoor from Bronson's uh, staff and employees and having a right livelihood. You're supporting um, all the way back down to the seed, right back down to the farmers. We really appreciate that. Um, and we're glad that you work with us to honor them and the work they do. Um, stay tuned later today, Brendan is gonna have Bob online at four o'clock um, Eastern time, one o'clock Pacific time, and they'll be doing uh, a live cupping of a very special geisha coffee. Now, I'm not gonna say anything about geishas. I'll let Brendan and Bob do the talking, but that should be pretty fun. I know I'm, I wanna tune in for that. Um, so check back here at one o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern time to see that special cupping with Bob. Um, and then we're going to be doing a deep dive into Whirling Dervish, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Those deep dives really just take a coffee, look at its flavor notes, um, and then talk about um, blends in this case, because it's a blend of coffee. Uh, and we'll do a, a brewing demo as well. Um, and as we continue through the week, we hope that you stay engaged with us here. We really appreciate your time, your energy. Again, thanks to Janice with Food for Farmers today. And thank you for tuning in. Um, have a great day and go make a cup of coffee.